Right, um, good evening folks. Um, I'm with what I would consider to be a very unusual guest um, in today's uh, world that we're in. Um, uh, an interesting character, no doubt. Um, Damien Lynch, who's going to be ordained in a couple of weeks' time, I believe. That's right, that's right. Very good. Um, before we start, I'd just like to say that I have no in interest in going into any detail of the sexual scandals in the church and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and I would completely accept um, your integrity, spirituality and intentions becoming a priest. Thank you. Yeah, Thank you. No, I, I genuinely mean that. Um, but how would you see yourself re reconcile with the, with the past of the church? How would you reconcile joining an organisation with that type of history at a time like this? Mm. Well, I suppose um, I wouldn't expect anybody who doesn't feel that they have a call from God to have the will to join an, an organisation like the church. Obviously, there's been problems in the past, but I suppose the reason I'm joining isn't because of my uh, faith in, in any one person in the church, whatever their character might be. Sure. The reason I'm, I'm joining is because of my faith in God, my faith in Jesus Christ. Sure. Right. And I believe that he's calling me to become a priest uh, and to do everything I can to, I suppose, work within the church and to, at, in this environment at this time, to do everything I can to um, help people to put their trust back in the church after everything that's happened. Right. But I suppose the question I'm asking, Damien, is, um, again, going back to your sp spirituality, integrity, mm -hmm. which are all things that I admire in anybody, why the Catholic Church, though? Uh, it's the church that I was uh, born and baptized into uh, right. and, and, and brought up in. Right. Um, I suppose I believe that, that the fullness of, uh, of the truth, the fullness of God's revelation is to be found in the Catholic Church. That's what the church teaches. Um, the church acknowledges that, that there are elements of the truth uh, to varying degrees to be found in the Protestant and the Reformed churches but that, uh, that the fullness of the truth of Jesus Christ and his person is to be found in the Catholic Church. I, I strongly believe that, and that's the basis of my conviction. Right, okay, yeah. okay. And come here, a good-looking young fellow like yourself, no? how you walking down the street and there's a couple of young birds passing you by. Yeah. You're a man, how do you intend, like, how, do you, how does your mind handle that situation? Do you not feel um, the same as any other fellow, like... Yeah, I suppose... I wouldn't um, mind to get to know them slightly better than I do. <laughs> yeah, uh, I suppose, I mean, I've, I've already made a promise of celibacy uh, when I was ordained a deacon a few months ago um, okay. because I believe that that, that is uh, something that God is calling me to and as well that it's a gift that <laughs> sort of cries out to society that sort of says every time you see a good-looking young girl or any time a woman sees a good looking young man that they needn't automatically think of maybe the carnal side of that uh, yeah. of, of that engagement you know sure. that there is something more um, I'm sure there's something more as well <laughs> yeah absolutely but I mean I suppose each of us is human each of us has our own difficulties yeah. and struggles um, I mean there's a lot to be said for simply um, no I wouldn't put it in in terms of you know casting the eyes down and walking on as, as though there's nobody there but trying to, I suppose, see more to the person, you know, to see more that there's more than just a body, you know, that there's a... Uh, sure. And, and that that person has been created by God uh, for something greater than, than maybe carnal lust or whatever it might right. be. Um, I suppose I just try to see the whole person um, rather than focusing on any one aspect. And that's what helps me, I suppose, to sure. overcome those moments, you know, that this person has a dignity, I, I, I can't. But, but you use the word, oh, yeah, sorry to go yeah. across it, but you use the word to overcome them. Like, yeah. do you, you need to overcome them. Well, um, I suppose in a certain very concrete way, yes. Yeah. Uh, it can be a challenge that I think in certain circumstances must, of course, be, you're a human, yeah. must be resisted. You know, I mean, the same way that um, people, for example, uh, I really want to eat that donut, but it's not good for me, so I just need to, okay. to draw back you know, for, for the larger picture, you know. Um, so I suppose that's kind of what I mean by yeah, that. I you suppose know. there's some people who would say that God, God's way to handle temptation is just to give in to it. Yeah, well... <laughs> the peaceful way. Yes, well, I suppose <laughs> I'd like to know how their lives are going generally. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, yeah. Come here, just going back to religion on a broader, mm -hmm. um, from a broader point of view. Um, you have Muslims in this world, right? Mm -hmm. um, fighting Christians. Yeah, sure. You have um, 
Catholics and Protestants in the North, thank mm -hmm. God we're more or less finished with that now, hopefully mm -hmm. for forevermore. But um, you'd always ha I, I'd always ask the question, uh, you, you for a good 15 years ago I studied the Bible a little bit, right? Mm -hmm. And I went to the Baptist church. No, I was brought up a Catholic mm -hmm. and I just went to a couple of sermons just because I was interested in finding out a little bit about religion for myself. Mm -hmm. And one of the things um, that I did was I brought three priests, if you like, from three different religions to dinner. Mm -hmm. A Baptist minister, a Catholic priest, and the other one was Church of Ireland, I think. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so we sat down and I had picked out pieces out of the Bible that um, they had different views on. Mm -hmm. And they all spoke about, about their views, nice and calmly and whatever. And eventually, after about 45 minutes, it became an argument yeah. amongst them. Yeah. A, a kind of nearly a bordering on an aggressive argument. Yeah, 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 yeah. And when I saw them, I was thinking to myself, you know, um, Michael O'Leary and Rainier got rid of all the estate agents. Mm -hmm. Why do we need a middleman between God and the human being? Because they seem to be only messing it up. Right, yes. Yeah, do you, know, do yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Well, um, I suppose, why do we need a middleman between God and the human being? I mean, travel agent, sorry, not a a state agent. Travel agent. I mean, if, if you like, I was going to get very theological here now, but yeah. God sent his own middleman between himself and, human, and the human being. That was Jesus Christ. Uh, everything that he did and said uh, has been recorded throughout time and is there for us in the Bible and in the tradition of the church as well, we believe. Um, now, I think you're right in saying that when the uh, individual then goes to that source and has a look at it and, you know, each person might have their own slightly different take on it, you mm -hmm. know. Um, that's kind of perfectly human and understandable. Uh, in the church, how we deal with that is that sort of throughout the church's history, it's discerned, it's contemplated, all this that's been handed down mm -hmm. and has sort of come to a kind of a consensus. Uh, and that's what we call the church's teaching authority, the magisterium says, look, after, after that's everything... That's in the Catholic Church. Yeah, that's right, in the Catholic okay. Church. Right. This is how we handle mm -hmm. it. Uh, after everything we've discerned, after all the thought and time and contemplation and prayer that's gone into it uh, by the Church Fathers, by the scholastics in the Middle Ages and, every, and everyone else, here's sort of our understanding and it seems to be quite coherent. Um, now, uh, that's ab about as much I can s as I can say on well, that. I presume uh, the Protestant religion would say the same thing. Uh, I suppose, it would, to be honest, I haven't really gone into it in that much depth. You, you seem to maybe know a little bit more about oh, it God, than I do. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, definitely, I mean, there's no doubt that when it comes to the Word of God, Catholics and people from the Reformed traditions or Protestants have different views on it. That's, that's very clear. Um, all the Catholic Church can do is, is, is hold her view and say, look, this is what we believe mm -hmm. is true. I mean, it affects things such as, uh, such as the Eucharist, you know, mm -hmm. is Christ body and blood present or is it not in, in the host, mm -hmm. in the chalice. Mm -hmm. uh, we believe it is. Protestants, ba based on their view, believe it is not, you know. And there's a whole complex process that goes into that of biblical study mm. and all that kind sure. of thing, you know. But it's interesting, though, because um, the, the, the Bible is, what, 2,000 odd years old mm. now. And then you think to yourself, if you ask for a report on something that happened a year ago, mm -hmm from 10 different people, you get 10 different reports. Sure, yeah, sure. Do you know? So yeah, then yeah. you try to, to look at it overall, and you say, these people, these religions are always fight, all fighting yes. over something that happened 2,000 years ago, yeah, and yeah. we can't agree what happened 50 years ago. Yeah, yeah, you that's know? right, yeah. I suppose you're, what you're dealing there with is the human condition, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, but, 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 but that's the point, though. You've yeah. given your life sure. to, to on the basis of the human condition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I suppose, then again, we believe that God can only work through human instruments uh, in the sense of how the, say, the scriptures were composed and things like that. Right. Uh, they were written by very definite people in very definite circumstances. But we believe that, you know, that, okay, while maybe every word of every paragraph may not be literally exactly true, that God is, is telling us something through all those words that we, you know, sometimes we have to break away from the absolutely literal word mm. uh, to, to kind of hear what God is saying to us. Yeah. Within that, you know, right. yeah. And would you ever, in your time um, training, or would you ever had doubts within yourself about the whole thing in general, yeah. or about becoming um, a priest? No, 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 no never had any right. doubts. No, no. I mean, 
I'm, I'm convinced that God is calling me to do it. And I mean, if I didn't believe that, I wouldn't right. be, especially these days, uh, I wouldn't be seen for dust and neither would, <laughs> neither would the, the 14 or 15 other lads sure, who are being yeah. ordained this summer who are all my own age, you know? Right. Um, yeah, so. I, I, I suppose from my side, I'd, I could understand the calling from God mm. and the spirituality. I sure. could, but it's the Catholic Church in the middle. Was, yeah, yeah, would yeah. Would be something that... Well, well it was, we believe that, that, God, that Christ instituted the church uh, again, the human condition sometimes has uh, has marred its progress well, and, 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 and its integrity. Yeah. Well, which church? The was it the C or the Protestant? Oh, or the Catholic Church. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do you yeah. know what I mean? That good. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the church, I suppose, that has existed continually from the time of Christ. I mean, the Protestant churches would have cropped up at various other times throughout history. And the Reformed churches would have broken away at a certain point. But the Protestant church was part of the Catholic church religion, uh, wasn't it? The... Um, was it not that King Henry VIII wanted to get married again? Or well, something? it's all very, it's all very complex. What it's you're talking about there is, 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 is the Reformed tradition, the Anglican tradition. Okay. Uh, Protestant churches would be more like Lutheran and Baptist and things like that. Okay. Right. That um, you know, yeah. I guess, yeah, I don't know as much as you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But tell me this: um, love between human beings. Mm -hmm. um, God, I presume, would would um, in, in your belief would um, what's the word I'm looking for? whatever word I'm looking for, would encourage it. Oh, uh, yeah, of course, absolutely, right. Yeah, yeah. Right, and it's a lovely thing. Mm. Why is there a problem with gay people? Well, the problem isn't with gay people. The problem is with, I suppose, how they uh, express themselves, uh, generally speaking, sexually. Um, that sort of inclination that they have towards that type of relationship. Uh, the church teaches very strongly that people who are, who are homosexual are to be treated with the utmost respect uh, and, and dignity um, in line with the dignity that they themselves have as people. Sure. But uh, the church believes that, uh, that say that love, w that, that that word love, especially love expressed between a man and a woman physically is something that is just that, that it is to be expressed between a man and a woman only because it's something broader than that. It's something that actually needs to be fruitful. It needs to be more than just the relationship between the two. Love of itself goes beyond itself. Um, if, if a man loves his wife, he, he'll do anything for her. You know, he won't just, it won't be just his own satisfaction that he's looking for. Sure, yeah. And the way that that's expressed in the context of marriage, marriage for those who are blessed is uh, fruitfulness of children and a family. And that's viewed as a very important aspect uh, of, of sexuality as far as the church is concerned, which is not only why the church does not agree with homosexual relationships, uh, it disagrees with anything, any, any form of expressed sexuality that isn't within that context of marriage. So even, for example, things like masturbation or things like that right. um, would be in the same context as, say, a sexual relationship between two men. Right, okay. But where would you draw, it's funny, where would you draw the line? Like, I mean, um, a husband and wife kiss each other. Mm -hmm. um, they, they're not kissing each other, they're kissing each other on Patrick Street sure. because they want to kiss each other yeah. out of love. Yeah. Um, what's wrong with a man and a man doing that, or a woman and a woman? Well, um, where do you draw the line? Like, is it is it kissing? Is it lying naked in a bed together? Is yeah. it into, where, like, do, do these people love each other, you know? Yeah, yeah. But I suppose all of those things, um, say for example, an affectionate kiss on Patrick Street or whatever it might yeah. be, are, um, I suppose, ordered in a way towards something greater. Um, you know, they're sort of an expression of love that w will inevitably lead to something else, you know. Um, not on Patrick Street. Not on no. Patrick Street, no, no, I'm, no, 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 I'm sure there wouldn't be. Yeah. But, um, I would treat them all as being sort of the same. So yeah, you'd, 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 you'd stop dead at any physical contact? Well, any sort of affectionate contact that, uh, like that, I would think so, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, the whole of Spain, all the males down there, they all hug each other when they see each other. Well, I suppose, you know, society would kind of delineate Cultures. between, yeah, of course. I mean, you know, I mean, even if you saw two men <coughs> hugging each other on Patrick Street, you know, you'd yeah. say well, they're just two buddies or whatever's happening, yeah. you know. Um, yeah. Yeah, it, yeah, okay. Um, Tell me the freedom of speech. Sure. Brian Darcy, Father Brian Darcy, mm -hmm. the good Father Brian Darcy, has been clamped by the Catholic Church, basically. Yeah. Whatever level, from wherever. Mm -hmm. um, 
you're going to be in the same position yep. or would you feel that you already are inclined yeah no um i suppose how i would view the situation of father brian darcy and and and, and those other and priests else, yeah. um is that pretty much as priests they have a duty to promote the teachings of the catholic faith that's what they've signed up to do that's what mm -hmm. they promise to do at their ordination and that when they act as priests um so it, it doesn't i mean it doesn't matter if, if if they're doing something other than preaching at mass, I mean, whether they're writing in the column or whatever, mm -hmm. as priests, as representatives of, of the Catholic Church and of Jesus Christ, that their duty is to, is to promote the teachings of the Church. And when they start doing otherwise, when they start breaking away and, um, I suppose, saying things that are contrary to what the Church believes is genuinely good for people, good for society. But how can lack of freedom of speech be good for anybody? No, uh, Those people after dying by the millions to, to, to get freedom of speech. Yeah, I suppose um, what I'm trying to say is that the church has a duty when those situations arise um, to sort of call priests like that to order and say, look, you're not doing your duty here. You know, you're, you're, you're basically saying things that we do not believe or that uh, are, are leading people astray. But how could I take you seriously as a priest if I was in your parish, right? Whichever parish yeah. you were nominated. If I say, um, Damien, Father Damien, uh, um, will give the church's line on anything mm -hmm. and preach, them, which is what his job is to do, and that's his calling and whatever. But I know I'm never talking to you. I, like what you were saying is, I, you can't give an opinion on anything else. Well, I, mean, I can't talk no, to you as a person anymore. No, no, uh, that's not fair because um, I'm uh, like I mean I feel that as a deacon, uh, as someone who's about to be ordained a priest, yeah. I mean I believe with conviction everything that the church teaches. If right. I didn't, I wouldn't be signing up to okay. put myself but in, the, what about in that the position. You have on anything, let it be a football match, let it be anything. Well, I mean, I know a football match, but you might know, like the freedom of speech. Yeah, you know what I mean. If you wanted to write an article, you want whatever you want to do. How how are you happy? I wouldn't be happy personally to be dealing with somebody that couldn't express their opinion. I Whether in a I'd have the same thing to say about a political party. Mind. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. If you're a Gale person that's um, holding the whip. Yeah, yeah. For for, for the wrong reasons, I'd yeah. have the same thing to yeah, say. Yeah, know? yeah, yeah. But I mean, it's only because I feel I'm a person of integrity that I can say that my opinions are the views of the church, and that when you speak to me, you're getting Father Damien's opinions. They're also the opinions of the church because that's why I'm becoming a priest, because I believe so strongly that those views are consistent with what it is to lead a good life, what it is uh, for society. But would you, would, you believe, would you think, sorry to go across, you, would you think that Father Brian Darcy, some of the things that he's saying, well, are, are all of the things, I suppose, that he's saying uh, going against the church? Well, to be honest, I haven't read everything. To be honest, mm -hmm. I've read very little of what Father Brian Darcy has written. Right. But uh, I'm, I'm just presuming that, uh, that, the re that, that the reason that, that um, you know, this sort of, uh, he's, he's been asked to, to stop writing or whatever it is, is because those in authority feel that he's, that, that he's not okay. acting for, for the good, you know? Okay. Yeah. There was um, a call um, by our Minister for Education, Rory Quinn, mm -hmm. to take all the schools under the control of the state mm -hmm. away from the church. And, you know, I don't know the answer to this, but is the reason that that hasn't happened? Is it are, are all the schools in the, in the church's name? Are they the church's buildings? Um, a lot of them are, I suppose. I think, I, will, I suppose they're under the patronage of the, ch patronage of of the, the church. church anyway. As for who actually holds the deeds, to be honest, I know very little about these things. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know. It is. Like, I mean, to be honest, when I heard of those plans, I think it was half the schools actually intended to take. I mean, the first thing that came into my head was just... I mean, thank God. <laughs> not at all. No, no, no. Thank God. But I mean, you're talking about why? Why hasn't it happened yet? I mean, it's a massive logistical thing to undertake. You know, I mean, I suppose you are talking about who ultimately owns land. Uh, what do parents actually want? You know, what are their views on the situation? Um, I mean, uh, I, th I think it was probably kind of silly to, uh, to 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 ever expect something like that to happen overnight. I mean, if it is a case that parents do want certain schools for their children that are, that aren't under the patronage of the local bishop, that's more than fair enough. If they're parents who, who who do want it to be the case, but are you saying then? Are you saying then, Damien, that um, we'll say in a situation where there's a school somewhere that's um, owned by the Catholic Church, mm -hmm. if the parents want it under the control of the state, you personally wouldn't have any issue with the building or whatever 
being handed over to the state? Well, that would probably be up to the minister to decide. Um, well, if he wanted to take it and the parents were all happy and this, we want this collectively to go back under the control of the state, mm -hmm. you personally wouldn't have an issue with that? Um, just off the top of my head, probably no. I mean, to be honest, I, I doubt if that situation would arise, especially in more rural areas where there's generally a, a fairly good relationship between, say, the local parish and the school and that kind of thing. But if the parents felt that strongly, um, I, I presume that the, that the minister would have to do something about it, you know. And well, and that, that, so and that, that might in, and that that well, it, I suppose it is the minister. I mean, it, he's he's in charge of education. The, the yeah, but at the minute, what the point, I suppose the point is, Damien, the minister mightn't be able to do much about it if the building is in the Catholic church's name. Sure. Uh, now, so then yeah. it'll be up for the Catholic church to turn around and say, OK, I, I've got a request, <coughs> sorry, from the minister and from the local pe residents. We want to take this, but it'll be the Catholic church's decision at the end of the day. Yes, OK, we'll give you that building because should the minister decide to go his own, on his own, Mm -hmm. He must build another school next to it. Yeah, sure, yeah. And yeah, that yeah. costs money, and we don't yeah, have a lot yeah. of that today. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I suppose, yeah, off the top of my head, that would be okay, yeah. Yeah, and yeah. For, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's You know, you just feel that, um, and I understand it. I mean, an awful lot of people, because of the sex scandals that have gone on, and it's not, you know, the, not to belittle them, that situation in any way, or mm -hmm. anybody that was a victim of it. Mm -hmm. But um, it's not so much the sex scandal, it's, it's all the cover-up. Mm. It's all the milking of, of, of energy, of um, information, piece by piece. Mm. The Catholic Church never owned up themselves and yeah, yeah, dealt yeah. with it. And I remember when this broke about 10, 12 years ago, it must be now, but eight years later, we were still getting reports of it still going on. Yeah, in, sure. You know? mm -hmm. So, I mean, you, you could understand why a lot of people would say, mm. listen, we need this under state control, not the Catholic yeah, Church. Yeah, although, to be honest, um, I mean, I've, I've spent time working in parishes, you know, as a seminarian, as a student, gaining mm. experience and that kind of thing. Um, and while what you say is true, that there, that there is a lot of disillus disillusionment with, you know, the sort of banner, the church, mm -hmm. people are quite happy with their priests and their parishes, with their parish-run schools. Mm -hmm. You know, when it comes down to those concrete things, uh, you know, in especially in areas where they've had good experiences of their priests sure. and, and of Catholic education in their schools, you know. Sure, there's yeah. an awful lot of fantastic work done by the Catholic oh Church. Yeah, I'm yeah, not yeah. taking from yeah. that. Oh in yeah, any sure, way, sure. Know. But I suppose I'm just distinguishing between, say, I mean, it sounds contradictory. Say a lot of public anger with the church over cover up, rightly so, and actually the attitude of people on the ground to their own local priests and parish schools, whatever it might be. Uh, the other thing I suppose from where you're sitting, Damien, a lot of people mightn't tell you exactly what they're thinking either. Uh, maybe not. Do you know? Um, maybe not, but by and large, I, I, I believe that that is the situation, you know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but ma mass attendances must be way down. Um, well, I live, in a, I live in a rural enough area. Yeah, well, okay, yeah. So, uh, so not bad. I, I, a couple of years ago, I did, um, I spent a year in the parish of Mallow, just south the road here, mm -hmm. um, and mass attendance I found quite good. You yeah. know, quite good. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But the young people, I suppose, today, I mean, compared to 10, 15, compared to when we were small, mm. we used to be in dread as a priest, like when the priest was coming in to, to, to test us for communion or whatever, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The teachers, everybody was rattled by yeah, the priest. Yeah, 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 yeah. Which, mm, looking back on it, didn't make a lot of sense, but mm. I'm sure that's mm. not the case today. Mm. But then. Um, Tell me this, do you realise the wealth of the Vatican? Uh, I mean, it's quite a wealthy institution, yeah, sure. Mm. It's got but somewhere between, in the best estimates of what's between bankers and whatever, mm. between 10 and 15 billion mm. US dollars under its control. Sure, yeah. It's involved in pharmaceutical manufacturing, invested in pharmaceutical manufacturing, mm -hmm. Um, insurance, global insurance, mm -hmm. construction, with which I wish them the best of luck with that one. Mm. <laughs> but, I mean, is it, would you not, like, what would you say to the person that would turn around and say, this is the greatest farce of all time? How's that now? This is a fan the corruption <laughs> in the situation where everything was covered up from the top down. Here, the, here's an organization with between 10 and 15 billion dollars. Like, you. You, what would you say to the fellow said this is the best scam of all time, of all living memory? In what sense now? I, in, I don't in, in like in corruption, in like why why would a religious organisation have fifteen billion dollars? Um, well, I mean, I, I presume most of that is in is in assets such as buildings and like a lot of. No, there's an awful lot of it. In, well, from what I understand, anyway, there's 
up to five, six billion alone in investment mm -hmm. on stock markets. Like yeah. I mean, they're, they're investing in stock markets all over the world. Yeah, so yeah. Again, you seem to know more than I do. Uh, maybe contact the Vatican Press Office or something for, yeah. <laughs> for reply. But like, would it ever hit your head? Like, I mean, I'm not talking about. I'm not asking you to talk for the church. Yeah. I'm talking to you as Damien, saying, "Come here, listen." Like for somebody that's going to give their life to this, you think. Hold on a while. Uh, am I looking? Am I being brainwashed here? Am I looking at this clearly? Yeah. Um, As an organisation, no, nothing again to do with spirituality. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Are you talking about in, in terms of like why isn't the money being dealt out in compensation or what? No, what's, no. What's the question? Well, wh why would any religious organisation for I at all have that kind of money? Um. I mean, as a Christian. As a Christian person, by, uh, you know, uh, sorry, as a spiritual person myself, mm -hmm. I would see absolutely no reason to have anything like that. And if I had, I'd want to give it to somebody that needed it. Yeah, well, I mean, that, I mean, there is a, a charitable arm of the Vatican called Peter Spence. The Pope gives a lot of money to across the world to different causes mm -hmm. and things like that. I mean, uh, why is he holding 15 billion? Uh, I, d I doubt if he's holding it there under his backside the whole time. I mean, like, it's a massive expense to run say, for example, a small country like the Vatican, uh, I mean, people's wages need to be paid. Um, yeah, but we're talking billions now, not millions. Yeah, I've, to be honest, I've no, I mean, know. I haven't right. even seen the facts on paper, so, you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, but, th I mean, but again, I say, say, mean? say, for example, in, in the Universal Church, every territory is responsible for its own yeah. finances. So, for example, the Diocese of Klein is responsible for its own finances. The Diocese of Cochrane Ross is completely separate. Right. So it's not that the money all comes from the top and sort of distributes around each diocese in the world. So, uh, for example, one diocese might be broke somewhere in South America, while one in North America might, you know, have be, be, in, lying, be yeah. in the black by for whatever it is, you know. Right. Um, so, and is is the pre is a pre salary paid um, from from the contributions of the locals or uh, or from the higher up uh, from the locals generally yeah 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 right yeah. Mm -hmm. okay yeah okay i see i often wonder you know you look at europe ireland's connection with europe mm -hmm. and we're now um, more and more since a few weeks ago under control uh, we're after signing away to, you know to europe um to the euro and what's coming down the road and all the rest mm -hmm. of it in the re referendum that's questionable as to whether we should or not but anyway people 60 percent of the people voted that we should I wonder, is there ever a case where the Catholic Church should break away from Rome? Um, where you'd have the Irish Catholic Church, that we could control ourselves? That we well, I mean, we could do that, but we'd no longer be part of the Church. Why? Of the Catholic Church. You'd be no, uh, why? Because uh, the Church, for its unity, depends on the Pope, the Bishop of Rome. He's the one who's been given by, by Christ as the principle of unity in the Church. If you want to be in communion with Christ properly in the church, you must be in communion with him. Uh, so every Catholic bishop in the world is in communion with the Pope. That's where the, that's where the church gains its universality. If we were to do that, we'd become some sort of a national church. In fact, uh, we'd become like the Protestant churches, sort of a national church running ourselves with no real link to the church's tradition, no real link back to Jesus Christ. Right, okay. Yeah. Interesting. Do you know what? The thought had crossed your mind, you think to yourself, do you know what, this fella now is a cute West Cork whore. <laughs> you get a salary of 100 grand a year, a free house, a free car, five or six... Uh, how much? How much? <laughs> Sorry, would you, would you like to repeat that? I, I didn't five, five or six um, foreign holidays a year, uh, and he knows celibacy is uh, going out the door. And uh, oh, I can, assure, I can assure you it's going nowhere, and I don't expect... <laughs> I've, I've absolutely no pretensions. This one is way cuter than us all. <laughs> yeah, oh God. <laughs> the best yeah. way to get a job. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm telling you, if you want... Yeah, if you want a job with people shouting at you walking up Patrick Street, you, you've chosen the right job. <laughs> yeah. Do you actually, do you, do you get a lot of 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 that kind of abuse? Uh, no, not really. Uh, maybe you might get a snide <coughs> comment or two from someone as they're passing, or the occasional person roaring at you from the other side of the street. But yeah. uh, sometimes, yeah, I mean, you know. Uh, yeah, well, that's more their uh, problem than yours. For some I mean. reason, people think that they can do that in a civilized society. Yeah. Um, but uh, other people are very kind, and you know, and very good, and mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. Very polite, and you know. Well, I'd always take yeah. a person for what they are, rather yeah, than yeah. What, what, no matter what uniform they're mm -hmm. on. Mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. I mean? um, and tell me this: what way would you see your role in the church going forward? Like, what are you looking forward to? We say. I'm looking forward to working in a parish, um, celebrating the sacraments for people with people, um, trying to, I suppose, foster their faith. You know, um, right. I suppose, trying to. Um, 
help them to enter into a relationship with Christ that uh, that I desire myself and that I constantly have to, to work on as well and move forward with, you know. Right. Um, so I suppose that's kind of it, just uh, doing what the Lord is asking me to do, right. I believe, you know. And yeah. you're into music, Damien? Yeah, that's you right. Do you yeah, play yeah. music? I do, well, I played the organ. I played played the organ in, in, in Maynooth all the time I was there, right. um, almost every day. Um, so, that, yeah, that would be a great hobby. But is, is that the only instrument you play? Or do you uh, it is at the moment, anyway, yeah. <laughs> you some have you some connection with Sean Reed? Uh, no, not, not family relation. I mean, uh, there's a choir you in, play tried in or? Kule. Uh, I, I used to sing with them, the church choir that he founded right. about 50 years ago. I think the okay, anniversary right. is coming up. Um, no, other than that, I don't, play, I don't play instruments other than that. No. Right. Yeah. Right. Well, listen, regardless of my beliefs or anyone else's, you're um, a man that knows what he wants and you're going ahead with it. Mm. And i just uh, like to wish you the best in your ordination day and for the rest of your life as a priest. Very good. Thank you Thanks very much. Thanks very much for coming in. Thanks really a lot. Thanks. Cheers.